July 16, 1969, Florida. The air was thick with anticipation. The world was watching, waiting, united by a single hope. Humanity was about to attempt its boldest journey to the moon. Three men, Armstrong, Aldrin, Collins, strapped into a tiny capsule atop the most powerful rocket ever built. Their destination, a place of myth, now within reach. For millennia, the moon was a symbol of the impossible. The hopes of Earth rested on these astronauts. Apollo 11 was more than a mission, it was a leap for all humankind. In NASA's control rooms, tension was electric. Around the globe, families gathered by TVs and radios, eyes fixed on the countdown. The countdown began. The world held its breath. It was about the potential of our species, and we were all going along for the ride. The adventure began. Why the moon? Why then? To understand Apollo 11, we must look back. The world was divided two superpowers, the U.S. and the Soviet Union locked in a Cold War. The new battlefield was space. The race began with Sputnik, the first artificial satellite launched by the Soviets in 1957. That beep was a wake-up call. The Soviets were ahead. They sent the first animal, then the first human, Yuri Gagarin, into orbit. Each Soviet victory was a blow to American pride. The U.S. felt the pressure falling behind in space meant falling behind everywhere. In 1961, President Kennedy issued a challenge land a man on the moon and return him safely to Earth before the decade was out. It was a gamble. The technology didn't exist yet, but the challenge ignited a nation. Half a million scientists, engineers, and technicians mobilized. They built the Saturn V rocket, designed the Apollo spacecraft, and wrote millions of lines of code. The Apollo program was born from competition, but it became a symbol of possibility. It was a peaceful battle in a tense era, a race to show what humanity could achieve. The moon was no longer a distant dream. It was the next frontier. The world watched as the U.S. prepared to answer the challenge. The stakes were high, but so was the ambition. The countdown to history had begun. The race to the heavens was on. The countdown hit zero. The world watched as the Saturn V's engines ignited. The rocket, a skyscraper of fuel and dreams, rose on a pillar of fire. The roar was felt as much as heard a primal scream of ambition. Stage by stage, the rocket shed weight, pushing the astronauts higher. The third stage placed Apollo 11 in Earth orbit. Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins circled their home, making final checks. Then came the command, Apollo 11, you are go for TLI. The third stage fired again, flinging them toward the moon. Their speed soared 24 zero miles per hour. Earth shrank behind them, a blue marble in the void. Three days of coasting through blackness lay ahead. Inside the cramped Columbia, the astronauts were busy. Pilots, engineers, scientists. They monitored systems, practiced maneuvers, navigated by the stars. One critical task, docking with the lunar module, the eagle, and pulling it free. This cosmic ballet was performed perfectly, far from home. Every move was vital, every error could be fatal. The journey was a test of skill, nerve, and teamwork. The moon grew larger in their window. The real challenge was just beginning. The world watched, breathless. The astronauts pressed on, closer to history. Imagine life inside that tiny capsule. Outside, the Earth, a living planet, floated in blackness. The astronauts were the first to see our world whole, without borders. Armstrong, the calm commander. Aldrin, the analytical pilot. Collins, the vital link in orbit. Each had a crucial role. Life aboard Columbia was a mix of routine and wonder. They ate freeze-dried food, exercised, and broadcast their journey to Earth. They showed us our planet, their ship, and their calm professionalism. But danger was always present, space is unforgiving. A single error could mean disaster. As the moon grew closer, it became a world of craters and mountains. Its gravity began to pull them in. The time for lunar orbit was near. They had to fire their engine to slow down, to be captured by the moon's gravity. The mission's fate depended on this single burn. The world waited, anxious. The astronauts prepared for the most critical maneuver yet. 
The moon loomed large, silent, and ancient. The moment of truth had arrived. Would they make it into orbit? The answer would decide everything. The world held its breath once more. The journey pressed on. July 21,969. Armstrong and Aldrin moved into the lunar module, the Eagle. The Eagle was pure function, built only to land on the moon. After final checks, they undocked from Collins and began their descent. The journey down was tense, relying on instruments and a stressed computer. Suddenly, alarm sounded the computer was overloaded. In Houston, flight controller Steve Bales made a split-second call, go. The astronauts pressed on. As the Eagle flipped for final approach, Armstrong saw a crater and boulders danger ahead. He took manual control, searching for a safe spot as fuel ran low. Mission control counted down the seconds. With moments to spare, Armstrong found a clear patch. He set the Eagle down gently. Contact light, Aldrin called. Armstrong shut down the engine. Silence. Then Armstrong's voice. Houston, tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Relief swept through mission control and around the world. The hardest part was over, but the mission was far from finished. The world erupted in celebration. On the moon, Armstrong and Aldrin prepared for the next step. The first humans had arrived on another world. The impossible was now reality. The world watched, awestruck. The next chapter was about to begin. The moon was no longer just a dream. Humanity had arrived. The adventure continued. The landing was confirmed. On Earth, jubilation erupted. But on the moon, Armstrong and Aldrin worked through checklists, ready for any emergency. Hours passed in the cramped cabin. Finally, it was time. Armstrong, in his white suit, opened the hatch and stepped onto the ladder. A camera captured the moment for millions watching on Earth. Armstrong descended, paused, and described the surface, fine and powdery. Then. He took the final step, his boot pressed into lunar soil. That's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. In that instant, he was every human who had ever dreamed of the moon. The dream was now real. We were there. The impossible had been achieved. Aldrin soon followed, joining Armstrong on the surface. Together they made history. The world watched, united in wonder. The first steps on another world had been taken. Humanity had left its mark. Aldrin joined Armstrong, calling the scene magnificent desolation. The moon was stark, brilliant sunlight, deep shadows, a black sky. For two and a half hours, they explored, bouncing in low gravity. They planted the American flag, set up experiments, and collected rocks. These samples would reveal the moon's secrets for decades. They took photographs, capturing the stark beauty for all humanity. Before leaving, they unveiled a plaque. We came in peace for all mankind. They left medallions and messages from Earth's nations. The mission, born of rivalry, became a symbol of peace and exploration. Their time on the surface was brief, but its impact was eternal. The moon was no longer just a distant light. It was a place we had touched. The legacy would last forever. While Armstrong and Aldrin explored, Michael Collins orbited alone in Columbia. He was their ride home, the vital link. For 48 minutes each orbit, he was cut off from Earth utterly alone. Yet Collins felt connected, confident in the mission. He ran checks, prepared for rendezvous, and watched Earth rise over the lunar horizon. The Eagle's ascent was tense, one engine, no backup. But it fired flawlessly. The Eagle rose, leaving its base and footprints behind. Collins guided Columbia to meet the Eagle. The rendezvous was a success. Armstrong and Aldrin returned, bringing moon rocks and memories. The eagle was left behind, its job done. The three astronauts were reunited, safe in their command module. They fired their engine, breaking free from lunar gravity. The journey home began. The hardest part was over. Earth awaited their return. The return journey was a time for reflection. The world celebrated their triumph. But Apollo 11 brought back more than rocks, it brought a new perspective. The blue marble photo showed Earth as one fragile island in the cosmos. Apollo was a triumph of science and engineering, spurring advances in technology and knowledge. The moon rocks revealed our solar system's history, but Apollo's true legacy was inspiration. 
It proved that together we can achieve the impossible. It inspired generations to dream bigger. The footprints on the moon remain a monument to human courage. Apollo 11 was not an end, but a beginning. A promise that we are explorers, dreamers, builders. The mission calls us to keep reaching higher. The cosmos awaits. The journey continues.